rain comes, it has a tendency to wash it away. And so tonight we want to welcome you all out to our evangelistic meeting. Uh, we are fighting for the souls, a family redemption plan for the souls of our families, of our communities. And we are so grateful that you are here. My name is Patrick Carter, and I serve as the senior pastor here at West End Seventh Adventist Church. We thank you so very much, and we too, we like to thank those who are tuning in with us online tonight that are watching. We know that you're going to be blessed. We know that you have already been blessed, and we know that God has something special in store for each of us on this evening. How many of us have enjoyed the nightly meetings that we've been out here so far? Amen. And we have something special that we want to give to some folk tonight. Um, I have some books here that I like to give out. You know, sometimes uh, folk come along and they're like, hey, what does the Bible say about this? Or what does the Bible say about that? And I'm here today to let you know that there is a book that I want to give out tonight that I believe can answer some of those questions. But before we begin, would you please bow your heads with me as we pray and invite the presence of God in this building, in this place. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so very much, Lord. You brought us through this work week. And God, you brought us here for this moment. Lord, way back when you were sitting on the great throne in heaven and you were imagining what the earth would be. Lord, you imagined this day, March 15, 2024. You imagined that on this night there will be an evangelist preaching the word of God. You imagine on this night that there will be somebody that would show up that was not anticipating to be here on this evening. But God, we know that you imagine that there will be a message that will come directly from the throne room of heaven that will allow them to see you more clearly and to say, this is where I need to be. I need to be in the presence of God. I need to be in the word of God. But Lord, at the end of the day, you want us to be with you in the heavenly places. So we thank you so very much. We ask and invite your presence, your Holy Spirit, the Father, as well as the Son, as well as the Holy Spirit. And Lord, send a few of those angels that sing praises to you in the kingdom of glory. And God, tonight, we ask that you would bless our hearts, teach us what we need to be taught. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. All right, tonight, 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 tonight. Let's see. I have a book, uh, The Bible Answers, and there is another book that I have. It's called The Desire of Ages. You know, one of the things that I love about this book called The Desire of Ages, it is a book written about the life of Christ. It gives some insights that you may not have thought of that talks about the ministry of Christ according to the Gospels. And I want to give this out tonight along with a book called Bible Answers uh, tonight. And so uh, I said on the other night, I said on Wednesday night that whoever is here at 6.59, there were two people that was here at 6.59. So we have a dear little sister over here that I want to go ahead and bring this over and give these two books to you this evening. Amen. May God bless you. May God bless you. Uh, is this your guest, Elder Taylor? Uh, that's, that's somebody else. Well, you Jesus' guest. Uh, who, who invited you tonight? Male or female? Mr. Wilson Marcellus. All right. Elder Marcellus. Okay. And I also have a book tonight. And I was told that there is someone here that uh, they go by the name of Nate the Great. That's what I was told. That's what I was told. And so, oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's Nate the Great, everybody. I want to give you a book, uh, Bible Answers, as well as there's another book there called The Great Controversy. That book right there will tell you a little bit about the history of the Christian church, and it also gives some insights according to the Bible how God plans to end and inaugurate his kingdom. Amen. I don't know about you all, but I'm waiting for God to inaugurate his kingdom. Why? Because I'm a little bit tired of this world. Anybody else tired of this world? I'm tired of sickness. I'm tired of pain. I'm tired of death. I'm tired of paying taxes. Amen. But with that being said, also, let me just encourage everyone. Please invite somebody to come out. These are messages of truth. They are messages of life. And we invite you to not only invite someone, but please come on out. Join with us, link with us. Why? Because we are trying to tear down the kingdom of Satan by the power of heaven. Amen? We know that God says the gates of hell will not prevail. 
God says in his word that there is nothing that he will withhold from those who love him. And God has a way for us to live. God has a way for us to talk. God has a way for us to walk. And we're going to find all of that out from the Bible. Amen. I believe the Bible. And I hope you believe the Bible as well. As well as that, if you have some small children, we have a little children's ministry that goes on at the same time as downstairs. We have a wonderful children's ministries team that will take your child and teach them about Jesus and tell them all of the great things that God has done for us, but most importantly, the love of Jesus Christ. If you don't have those small children, maybe you have a small grandchild. We're looking at around ages 6 to 12, and if so, then we invite you to bring them here. God bless you. We appreciate you being here this evening. At this time, we will be favored with some special music by our praise team. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Well, that was good for maybe to yourself. Praise the Lord, everybody. God is so good, so we all just came to praise him. So please stand on your feet. This is not a concert, this is worship. I just wanna praise you forever, forever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, 
God blessed me. So thankful that God gave us his son. So thankful that his son gave his life. So thankful that the Holy Spirit is here with us. So I'm just a thankful person. And because of that, I just have to remember that God is Alpha and He's Omega. He, we just, he deserves the worship. Hallelujah. We serve a God that's worthy to be praised. Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. We are so grateful for God for safe travel and mercies. And we praise God for his great family redemption plan. Church of the living God, we are praying. Merciful Father, thank you. 
for your willingness to allow us sweet communion with you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We, your people, the apple of your eye, thank you for commanding the blood to continue to flow warm throughout our bodies. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Holy Father, many of us have children and family members that we want to stand in the gap for. And we do so right now by asking that you would please have mercy, even now, on the sound of all those that are under my voice. And I am bound and do to pray for. Sean and Jalen, and the list goes on. Please, Holy Spirit, move on their behalf and the behalf of all those under the sound of my voice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, you have blessed us with one of your powerful preachers, one of your powerful preachers, Pastor Nathaniel Gracias. He has been on fire and has blessed your people in a mighty fashion. Please continue blessing him and your people with the presence of your Holy Spirit. And Father, as I close this prayer, please empower us, your people, to always have a prayer in our heart and hold on tight to you, and everything will be all right, and you will save us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' sweet name, I ask and pray. And all of God's people said, amen, amen, and amen. Good evening, everyone. How is everyone doing? Yes, yes, and I heard a happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Is anyone else happy to be in the house of the Lord this evening? Anyone make it through a tough week? But we're here by God's grace. I am so happy to see you all. Some faces are familiar, some are new, and I'm happy to see both, <laughs> both types. And those who are online, Thank you so much for signing on and checking us out tonight. And those who may catch the replay, I know that you will be blessed as well. If you have never been here before, I just want to officially welcome you to West End. We like to call ourselves uh, one of the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost headquarters. And I hope that you're already experiencing the liberty and the peace of being in God's presence. So may God bless you, and let's have a great time in the Lord tonight. Now's the time for everyone that's here to be able to participate in the worship service this evening. Would our urses come forward and receive our offerings at this time?
since the offering has been lifted, indeed, we must thank our God for his offerings. Merciful Father, everything belongs to you. So I thank you, Father, for the liberation of your people in returning our offering to you this evening. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name I ask and pray. Amen. believe that God is great. Well, even if you don't believe it, he's great. When you think about all the things that he's done, he's great.
he great? Yes, he is. Well, now would be our typical prize time, our special feature. But those who are early know that we switched it up and did the prizes early. <laughs> yes, the first, one of the prizes that went out earlier was for the first person who came. But you know what? There were two that came at the same time. So, <laughs> so that was two of the prizes. But I'm here planning for the next time. Planning for the next time. Did anyone bring any visitors with you today? Oh, okay. I see you brought two. Okay, I see Mr. Nelson brought two. Okay, did anyone else bring anyone? Okay. Okay. All right, Brother Orange. Okay. Amen, 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 amen. And it's so good to see new faces. Hope you're enjoying your time. And then I see some people I don't recognize in the room behind me. But you may be veterans. You may have been here longer than me and maybe haven't been here in a while. Or maybe you're new. Welcome, welcome either way. God bless you, God bless you. So just remember to keep inviting friends and, of course, bring yourself as well. I don't know about you, but I've been blessed. I have been blessed. And to those who are watching that live nearby, who you're thinking, I don't know if I want to come out of my warm house. If you've got kids, they are missing out. Downstairs we have VBS and it's fun. It's fun. The, one of the first nights I learned how to to pray, but thinking you think of it's a it's a sea theme, and they used an octopus, not an octopus. I'm sorry. Um, what is the one with the tentacles? Um, squid. It's like this is jellyfish. Thank you, thank you. My brain was not not bringing me the word. So they used the jellyfish. And they made these little rings of their prayer to God, and they made like a chain. So they're learning how to pray, not just with words, but learning how to pray. For those who are physical, who are visual and need to see their prayers, they're learning, they're learning how to pray. Isn't that exciting? In fun ways and communicating with God, learning how to give, how to give encouragement to one another. So yes, if you have kiddos, you have neighbors with kiddos, bring them out. It looks amazing. Amazing down there. I may have to sneak down there a little while later tonight. But yes, thank you to everyone who is here. And stay tuned for our next prize time Sunday. Yes, Sunday, 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 Sunday evening. At, we'll be here at 7. Blessings to you all. Now it's time for us to sing our theme song, Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, we have been redeemed. And we're going to do two verses.
Amen, amen, amen. We've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We want to say happy Sabbath to everyone. Happy Sabbath to everyone. This is something special that we celebrate the rest of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave us. This is the day of the Lord. Um, tonight we're going to study, uh, I don't know, uh, Taina, the, the title is DNA Evidence Needed. DNA Evidence Needed. We had made that, that switch. I don't know if you can do that right now. We want to greet everyone who is watching online. And tonight, even though he was introduced already, uh, my boss is here. He's my boss. He's here. Uh, Pastor, <laughs> Pastor Preston is also a big brother for us. And we are so happy to see him. Can we hear you say amen? amen. We're happy for all our visitors who are here. And we are glad we can continue with our family redem redemption plan. As we understand families and how important this is, there's a vow that you make forsaking all others until death do us part. But that thing about forsaken, it's not always a reality. Are you with me? So tonight, as we say DNA evidence needed, we are going to talk a little bit about the need for some evidence of parenthood, of childhood, of fatherhood. We will talk about that in a moment to introduce the truth of the living God. But as usual, let us bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, may you have your way. May you touch us. May your Holy Spirit lead, bless and keep us. We pray. That your Holy Spirit will touch someone tonight. As we see the evidence through the blood of Jesus. We need you. We trust you. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Forsaken all others until death do us part. That's why it's important to choose well because marriage is until death. And we, we, have, we have done this topic on Monday to, to talk about death and we see the lie. But even when people are still together, there's an, another issue in marriage today. is the issue of unfaithfulness. The American Association for Marriage and Family Therapy reports that when it comes to married couples between 10 and 15% of women are unfaithful. And the new media is even saying that more women are unfaithful than men nowadays. Because they say they are more, they are smarter than the men. And, and, and we, 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 we rest on the American Association for Marriage and said that 20 to 25% of men are unfaithful. They, they, they share that anecdote that um, there was a time um, a man went, he left his wife and went to the movie theater with a girlfriend. And then uh, while that girlfriend was there with him at the movie theater, somebody very angry came out. Uh, uh, at the theater and said, my girlfriend is with somebody inside and I want, I want to get there. And then he had a gun and he said, the only way, go on the PA system and say, if you are not with your wife, come out now. Because if, if not, I will come, I will go in, you cannot stop me, I will shoot inside. If you don't want that, go in the PA system and announce that I am waiting for that guy outside. And then the PA system was on, the, the feedback noise came, and then uh, we went to announce that the guy is not with his wife who is here 
uh, somebody is waiting for you outside. Can you please quickly leave? And <laughs> half of the theater was out. Half of the men left because half of them were not with their wives. So, so many men, at least 100 men walk out. We live in a society where commitments are not kept anymore. And that's why we have the needs for shows like the Maury show. When Maury will announce, when it comes to five years old, Ray Ray, uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Black, you are, and then the, the heart is racing. You don't know if the nut is coming or not. Maury will tell you, you are not the father. And this is the time the woman will run away, run to the backstage, and all those things. I don't know, but do you know who it is? So they will do another DNA test. At times, DNA evidence is needed. I'm going to share a true story with you. Something that is shocking that shows how infidelity is prevalent. And before I share that story, what it breaks is trust. Because we are the covenant. It does not matter what happened in that relationship. But if you're going to work at it, put your energy to make it happen because because when trust is broken it is hard dr carter to make it happen again so now the effect of unfaithfulness in a church setting we lose members because when it is known somebody will leave out of shame the effect on the kids because unfaithfulness does not only affect the partners, but also the children. The children feel betrayed. It is betrayal. And nowadays, unfaithfulness is so easy because of, because of uh, the social network system. You don't have to leave your house to be engaged emotionally with somebody virtually. It's become more difficult, that faithfulness that God has asked us to do what is right. DNA evidence is needed. And I'm going to share that true story with you. It was in a couple. The wife was Christian. The husband was a half-baked Christian. And then, true story. My wife is watching, is, is with me here. She, she's saying, you don't have to say true story again. I can, I can read her mind. <laughs> she just said that and she, I know. And that guy, and you will see why I kept on saying that. Because it's unbelievable. A white couple, a white couple, Pastor Orange. White couple. They were pregnant. Had done all, every checks for everything. They had a healthy baby. And the day of delivery, something happened. They had a black baby. Black baby. Now, it was hard to believe. And now watch this. With a white baby, the wife knew she did not do anything. She asked for a lawyer. And the man was ready to divorce and to, to get ugly. I've been betrayed. What black about me do you see? And then the woman was praying and searching. She hired the best lawyer in town. The lawyer started an investigation. Lo and behold, that woman needed some, the man needed some DNA evidence, but also the woman. With the DNA, they started looking for that father. The lawyer 
found out about the father. They found the black man that the woman have never met in her life. And this continued to pursue. It was like CSI at a high level. They continue to find out what happened. And this is the truth. I will summarize it for you. I will not tell you it took days and months of investigation. I will not go there to tell you all what happened. All the money that was spent because she said, I was faithful. I just need more DNA evidence. The husband wanted more DNA evidence. And then at the end of it all, this is what happened. Nowadays with cameras, with everything that is recorded, uh, I'm telling you, they will find out so many things that you would never believe. There was a friend who invited him to a bachelor's party that same evening when the wife was pregnant. Watch this. And that same evening with that bachelor's party, there was some funny business inside, some swapping inside, some uh, things that uh, uh, I'm telling you that God spoke about, uh, about the pornea, it's orgies, it's things that they were doing at that bachelor's party. And then uh, they found that the very night uh, at the bachelor's party, for the first time, they gave this man a blue pill. But that blue pill made him so alive and well down there that not only after he finished his business over there, when he went home, he wanted to show how strong he was to himself and to his wife. The, the, the pill was still working. And then he did not wash himself. And there was some swapping in there. And they found out as he reached home without washing himself, he went and got involved with his wife. That's when the egg, the sperm of that black man had to transfer to this man. And the evidence were there. That man, they found out he was there at 745, was in that bachelor party. And then the white man was there when all those perversion was going on. They were both there and that woman attest and witness yes I slept with both of them but in this order I slept with the black person first and then this white man the DNA evidence needed some 2,000 years ago there was another talk on the street when Mary had a baby, and then Joseph, who never knew her, some DNA evidence was needed. But what they did not understand, it was the operation of the Holy Spirit. It was incarnation in, inside the flesh. Carne, flesh in the Greek word. It was God who became flesh. It was not another race, another color, but it was another nature. Are you with me? Jesus who became flesh. And at that time, Mary was the talk of the town because they did not know what happened within the family circle. They needed some DNA evidence. I'm telling you, from that time, our Jesus had to prove so many things to his own, to those who did not even receive him. They did not receive him. He went about doing good at the age of 12. He was in the temple doing good, teaching. He was doing good about educating, about uh, the word of God. He performed miracles. His first miracle, as we are in a family redemption plan it is not worthy to know that his first miracle happened in a wedding are you with me God is still blessing wedding he's still into that business he still wants us to be faithful he still wants us to keep our words it he still wants us to have that trust hello somebody and even if the wine in the marriage is running low Jesus can still perform miracle can I hear somebody say amen he went about doing good for physical business.
being, not just for family, for, for the family institution. Oh, he would turn some loaf of bread, five, the evangelist said, and few fish, and then he will feed 5,000 people. What a miracle worker. He did it, and he would touch the leper. He will be clean. He will walk on the sea. He will do all great things. This is my Jesus. But I'm telling you, at the beginning of his time, he needed some DNA evidence. And at the end of his life, there will be some need for DNA evidence. And I'm going to show you how. But my Jesus, he was all about doing good. Are you with me? It is so sad in our society. We have so much fake news. What is genuine, we doubt it. And what is a lie is readily accepted. Are you with me? And with gaslighting nowadays, the cheater may make somebody think they are crazy in the relationship. Are you listening to me? So now, now, my Jesus, your Jesus went about doing good. He performed those miracles from he started until his last miracle. The last one was when he took the ear of Peter, that the, the disciple, the ear of the Roman soldier that Peter caught down. He placed it back. It was all about doing good. Our Lord Jesus is all about doing good. Can somebody say amen for that? And tonight is all about doing good. I know you have been invited, even, even, even constrained to come to this place tonight. But I'm telling you, Jesus is all about doing good. Whoever you are, Jesus wants it the best for you. No good thing is he would withhold from you. He's all about doing good. Hello, somebody. He wants the best for you, even at the end. But guess what? He had... An accusation. They claim that he want to throw the Roman Empire. They said that he claimed to be the king of the Jews. Some evidence would have been needed here too. But I'm telling you, because he came for a purpose. To die for you and for me. He went on the cross. And tonight, if we should have a, 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 a caption, this is uh, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Are you with me? And, and we will understand that he came to give us life. And through his death, we will have eternal life. And uh, it was not easy. Salvation is free. But it's not cheap. It cost the life of the Son of God. The Son of God was killed on the cross. With him, they also crucified him. They nailed him with two robbers. They, they had him. And can you picture with me? May I, may I. Connect with your imagination to see my Jesus receiving 40 beatings on his back, lashes on his back. And then picture that uh, those uh, lashes had some hooks on them. The, the, the things they use to, to hook for fishing, that's what the same thing on what they use to touch, torture. Any slave at that time. And picture that going on his back. And as it reached to his back, we see the white flesh. And then blood gushing out of it. And then it was uh, 21, 22. He could not take any more because the day before... He did not eat because of judgment. He was uh, weak. And he had to go through that. And on that back that was bleeding, he had to carry a cross. And that rugged cross 
and to walk so many miles. Pastor Preston and I, we walked that walk. It was not a short walk. It was not an easy walk. Uh, that, that, that's when I adopted him as, as a big brother because I could see this man was already 50 years old and he was still climbing the path of Jesus Christ in Israel. And, I, and, and from that time I said, you got to become my big brother. Are you with me? Yeah, your pastor uh, did well. Hello, your president did well. And, and, and I could see Jesus going through this uh, with uh, a cross on his back. And as he reached there, they nailed him, Dr. Carter. But they nailed him and all his weight was on only three points. The first hand when the nail went, it was not easy. The nail has to make space between the bones and go through the flesh. And right there, another one. But the third one, they needed a nail that is so long to put both feet together. And finally the soldier said, I found one that's long enough. But somebody shout, it's too rusty. It's not a problem. The hammer will do the job. And he was sweating and blood was going through his body and then at that time they put both feet together and they nail my Jesus for all those places that we have been with our feet that we should have never been they nail both of them together and at this point my Jesus was between two thieves and one of them said if you are really Jesus if you are really what you said if you are really the son of God come down but he looked at him, I said, he said, I cannot come down because there's somebody in West End that would have needed me 2,000 years after. I cannot come down because there's someone, there's someone, your children, the devil would have gone after you. I cannot come down. If I come down, your, your children, when the devil go after them, will have no power of redemption. Your family would not have any power of redemption. If I go down, your children will turn to crackhead and go to a grave without any hope I got to stay I got to stay because this church that is going through hell I have to stay and proclaim that the gates of hell will not prevent it prevail against it I got to stay so that church could become from from, from a church that is struggling it has to become a triumphant church so I got to stay to finish what I've started. And another one said, remember me. Remember me. May I say to you tonight, it does not matter where you're coming from. As long as you're seated here, you are part of one or the other. You're whether at the right side of Christ or the left side of Christ. And tonight, I'm going to have you vote which side you want to be on. Those who want to stay on the side of Jesus Christ will have to stand for him. Because that's why he said, if somebody wants to follow me and to make it to the kingdom, you have to pick up your cross and follow me. He was crucified. He died for you and for me. But there are some ladies that witness Witness that crucifixion. At a point, he was abundant. He said, Eli, Eli, lama sabatani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Am I not your legitimate son? Did you do any DNA test and you realize that I was not yours? Let me tell you what happened. Because of sin. The father in his holiness had to remove himself. This is what happened with sin. Sin, uh, he has taken our sin. And that's why I'm telling you tonight, we can, through his death, be born again. And talking about born again, there will be baptism during that series. Hello, somebody. I did not hear the Amen. But we are here, um, I did not come here for anything else that someone can 
be buried in the death of Christ and be resurrected in a newness of life, of power that is in Jesus Christ. And then as the ladies witnessed that, they saw the assassination. They saw what happened. They saw water came from his side and then blood. They saw everything. They saw also the stone that they placed in front of that tomb. They saw everything. And now those ladies, Diana, in Mark chapter 16, on Sunday morning, and, 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 and I'm, I'm here to tell you, he rested on the Sabbath. Somebody did not hear that. He rested, he gave the breath, he gave that soul that we mentioned about, that wuha, that numa gave up on Friday. And Sabbath, yes, he rested. But Sunday morning, something will happen. And when the Sabbath was passed, are you with me? Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spies that they might come and anoint him. They wanted to honor the God. And just like some of us here, we want to honor God. But there is a stone. There's always a stone. Keep going. Uh, verse 2. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week. Uh, everybody knows that. And I know what I'm building with, with you. Knowing that it was... Uh, early morning in the first day and which day was the first day we all know about Easter Sunday it's the same thing it was Passover so we can shout it it was on a Sunday morning so if you can uh, take note of that Jesus was resurrected on what on a Sunday morning he rested the day before which is the Sabbath are you are we together and uh, this is another topic we'll get back to that they came on to the sepulcher at the rising of the sun very early and now let's go to verse 3 and they said among themselves who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher who shall roll away the stone? Ah, we always have some stone. When we want to do good, evil present itself. There's always some stone. I don't know what is your stone tonight. But when we worry, we do nothing. Because we have to trust and obey. There's no other way. As we go to that path to honor God, we got to learn to trust in him. They were worried. They were saying, who shall roll away the stone? Maybe there's a parent who is asking, oh, I'm going to make it until the school year ends or oh, I'm going to do it without a father figure for my kids or oh, I'm going to do it because the budget we have more items than money in it or oh, I'm going to make it uh, because uh, my children are addicted to something that is destroying them how oh, I'm going to make it in life how oh, I'm going to make it without a job how oh, I'm going to make it to finish that class how oh, I'm going to make it uh, with my life how oh, I'm going to make it with that sickness the doctor said he does not like what he saw in the exam result how oh, I'm going to make it who shall roll away the stone how oh, I'm going to make it they were saying who shall roll away the stone there's someone here who is asking the same question but I'm here to tell you that worrying is carrying tomorrow's load with today's strength carrying two days at once it is moving into tomorrow ahead of time worrying does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow it empties today of its strength and that's why now is the acceptable time you don't have to worry about how oh, I'm going to serve God how oh, I'm going to honor him I bought spices I have this in my heart to serve God some of you sit here you said to yourself it has been a long time I wanted to serve God but I don't think I can serve him in my situation the ladies said the same thing they thought they could not serve God because of the stone but I'm telling you God is a stone waller he can roll away 
your stone. Touch somebody beside you and say, he can do it. I don't know what stone is it, uh, he can do it. If it is sickness, he is the great healer. Hello somebody, if you have trouble, he is the comforter. Whatever you are going through, God can roll away your stone. They did not understand that. Sometimes we worry. We have that fear. We mentioned that definition. is a false evidence appearing real. Forgetting that if God before you, who can be against you? And that's why we want to understand that man at times is not worried by real problems so much as by his imagined anxiety about real problems. That's why Epictetus said, I will say that again, it's tweetable, somebody. Man is not worried by real problems so much as by his imagined anxiety about real problems. So that's why tonight we got to trust him. You got to trust God. I'm here to tell some of our visiting friends, God will take care of it. I don't know what it is when you trust him. I know maybe you, you're seated here, your, your, your mind, your imagination is about some trouble. Something you don't know how to get out of it. But God can do it. He has done it before. He will do it again. Just like those disciples, they thought they saw a ghost. But it was Jesus who shouted and said, it is I. Sometimes what you think is not what you will get because God is in control. I did not hear the amen. I'm saying God is always in control. He's always in control. But apart from their problems, and, and we'll see that in the text, verse 4, verse 4, Taina, as, as they, they, they went, and when they looked, hallelujah, sometimes it takes a deeper look. If you look, you will see you are not where you used to be. Uh, yeah, yes, I, I have not gone into the tomb as yet, but the stone is no longer there. There's something that was going on in your life. If you had listened, if you had paid attention to that thing, you did not look into Jesus, you could have really committed suicide. But you realize that God is always in control. And you made it. And now, now understand, as they were going, they saw the stone. Stone was rolled away. Now that's where we need some DNA evidence. <laughs> because the good news, I don't know if you observe all the enemy is evil. And that's why I'm telling you the great controversy is real. Each time you start getting some joy, some happiness, you want to testify about it. You post it on Facebook and Satan slap you to say, you better put down that post because you are nothing as blessed as you think. Has anybody witnessed that? I'm talking to a mature audience. Sometimes you come up here, you grab the mic, Pastor Del Valle, you want to give a testimony. As soon as you finish the testimony, the devil wants to say, you lie because I'm going to trouble you. As soon as the ladies get the good news, that is reason. Watch what happened in Matthew 28. Taina, get Matthew 28 for me. Uh, uh, uh. Matthew 28 verse 11. While they were still rejoicing. Saying that we found a way. And by the way, what those men were saying. Up to today, some philosophers are saying that Jesus was not risen. They even have a whole philosophy about it that is called thanatology. That means Jesus really came. They, they admitted to that. He came, but he died, but he stayed in the tomb just like Buddha is in the tomb. They, 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 they believe that he's not Alive. 
that's the theology of the death of Christ. Some people still believe what 2,000 years, there was some DNA evidence about it. Can we go to the word? Here it is. Now, tonight, let me tell you, as every night, we are staying in the Bible. Hello, somebody. Amen. We are reading the word of God. Now, when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and shoo into the chief priest all the things that were done. You know what they said? We saw the angel. We saw the resurrection. He is risen. We had to run away. We had to run for our lives. Verse 12. There will be a need for DNA evidence. Hello, somebody. That's where it connects. And when they were assembled with the elders, mm, be careful of elders who lie about Jesus. Hello, hello, somebody. And as we open the Bible, I don't want to be controversial, but from Monday night, you notice that some people who claim to be followers of God have been lying about God. You remember that? And that's why we need that redemption plan because the truth shall set us free. And the word of God is the truth. Some of elders, be careful. It's not everywhere. It's not every man that say, Lord, Lord, Lord. Hello, somebody. And had taken counsel. They gave large money unto the soldiers. My version said, the priests, hello, someone. They pay money for a lie. And they gave money to the soldiers, verse 13, Ashley, uh, saying, say he, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. Now that DNA evidence would have been wanting. Let me tell you why that DNA evidence would have been wanting. In any court of law, and, and if you come with that, with that thing, to Judge Judy. He would look at those guys and say, you're lying. You know why they would lie? How could you be sleeping? And you could see who took away the stone. Now, 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 look at me now. Who is ashamed now? Who is embarrassed now? You, 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 it, it, it's because people who stand against the purpose of God, people who stand against the redemption plan of God, people who stand against the family redemption plan of God, people who stand against the human plan, salvation plan of God, let me tell you, you will always be put to shame wherever you turn it. Because I got different DNA evidence. The DNA evidence we have here, I'm going to show you. And this is going to help us trust in the Lord. Are we together? Saying, yeah, his disciples came by night. If it was by night, or could we know they were the, his disciples? First problem. Second problem. If you were sleeping, or could you see them? Are we together? And now, 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 keep going. And then they're going to lie even more. They're going to say something. And, and, and if this comes to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. Why they needed safety. Now, they need witness protection. That witness protection program was about lie, fake news. Let me tell you why. Why, Dr. Carter, they needed to be secured? Because if you are a Roman soldier, and you sleep on your post of duty, you should be condemned. You should be executed. So now, 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 th this is all the mess because they did not want to receive the mercy. The mercy, are you with me? Now, now, let's go to, to, to verse 3. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. That's why you and I, we need some serious DNA evidence. The first one I'm going to give you, go back to verse, let, let's go back to, let's go back to, the word of God in Matthew 28. And we'll read from verse 2. Let's go there. 
we'll see what really happened. Yes, Ashley, Matthew 28, verse 2. And behold, there was a great earthquake. First of all, for that to happen, the earth shook. And there was darkness in another of the, 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 the gospel that told you that the, the DNA evidence here, that the Lord, the Lord of lords, the King of kings, God, something happened. It's a mystery. Light, the light of the world shut down. There was darkness. And I'm going to tell you, the earth shook because the creator of the earth was on the cross. Hello, somebody. These are DNA evidence, and I call them divine nature action. Hello. Oh, they did not get that. Uh, you, you thought I was talking about DNA only. These are divine um, nature action. It was the divine nature because most of my funerals, there, there's never been earthquake. There's never been darkness, but this was divine nature in action. Are you with me? Divine nature action. Because uh, that's the first thing that happened. They, they had that. And the, and the stone was rolled away. The stone was, was rolled back. I always like to put it that way. When the angel came with so much strength, I say to you, there is power. In the blood of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There's so much power. Oh, get ready, my president, to pray for somebody to come out of that situation. Because God can take you out of that grave. There is power in Jesus. And remember when Daniel had prayed, Pastor Delva, eh? Daniel prayed and asked God, can you give me the meaning of that vision? For 21 days, they could not get through. But now the angels at the resurrection of Jesus, they said that is the final quarter now. We cannot afford the disrespect that took place during Daniel's time. We need some strength. We need some help. And they got the seraphim. The seraphim. They got the cherubim. And they made it. They, they made a pick. And that pick happened. And they said that the, the angel that will come. Gabriel will come down. So you got to keep in check. The evil angel on the left. The evil angel on the left. On the right. But. Gabriel will come to the center. And as he touched down, that's when there was an earthquake. Second DNA evidence. That was divine nature action. It was not simple. And that angel will roll back the stone. Now, now, in the Hebrew, in the, in the Greek word for roll away, I found something very interesting. I found that there is... If one of the gospel translated it as cool you, cool you would simply means roll. But there's another one that use the word anakulio. Somebody say anakulio. Anakulio is like to unroll something so easily, like you're unrolling a book. That's, that's what it is. And then there was another, another, and that's the one that I like the most. Apokulio. Apokulio, it is to unwind and to throw like a stone. I love that. Sometimes the stone, the trouble, the problem, the difficulty in your life, God is so able to roll it away that he will remove it as if it was a little marble. As if it was a little stone, something you just throw away. Uh, Jamaicans would say you just fling away. Are you with me? Something you just touch and just push it down like nothing. That's why when the ladies were worried, God has, had already fling it away. Throw it away like a frisbee. Throw it away like a ball. Throw it away like a little tennis ball. Throw it away like a baseball. That's the... That's the meaning coming from that Greek word. That Greek word we find here. That is 
Apokuluyo. And that's why we got the apostle to send. It's like you are sent. You are pushed away. Hello, somebody. My God, he had the evidence here that that empty tomb, but it was not enough the way he did it. God has a way to do things in your life that everybody will admit it must be God. And the soldiers themselves said that it must have been the Son of God after that earthquake, after that uh, divine nature action. Hello, somebody. God has some DNA evidence in your life. He's going to do something for you that everybody will confess it must have been God. Are you ready for that? And then now, now as they, they realize that in that verse, I have good news for you. That thing that has been troubling you, that has been in between you and your God, between you and your miracle, that was that stone. Because they worried about who shall roll away the stone. I am here to tell you, don't you worry about that thing in your mind. Not only God has angels to take care of it, but the angels want to show you who is in control. I love that verse because the text says, after rolling the stone away, to make sure that Satan and his agents don't bring it back up so you don't see the evidence. So nobody, not even the soldiers, because listen, and this is powerful. This is powerful. If those same soldiers had the power to roll it back, guess what would have happened? The ladies would not have been able to roll it and to see what was inside. There will be no evidence. But what the angel did, Dr. Carter, Dr. Carter, 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 he sat on it. Angel of that type of power, sitting on something, bury it. As he sat on it, it is now buried. Your pain can be buried. Your situation can be buried. Your sickness can be buried. It will not roll away again. That thing you are going to, God can bury it. I don't know who is here. I'm telling you, whatever you are going through, God will sit on your stone. God will sit on your stone and instead of your deliverance, instead of your healing being buried, your trouble will be buried in the name of Jesus. Yes! Yes! God can roll it and sit on it. God is going to sit on your anxiety. It will not come back. God is going to sit on that tumor. It will not come back. God is going to sit on that cancer. It will not come back. God will sit on that thing that is taking away your peace. It will not come back. Your trouble, your persecution. God will sit on it. And that is buried. There's evidence. Because they seal an empty tomb. Divine nature action. Because of that empty tomb, you and I, we can stand for Christ. Because I have evidence all over me that Jesus did. When I was four years old, I was paralyzed. Could not walk. For six months, could not walk. My mother, working as a nurse at the General Hospital in Port-au-Prince, was praying, crying. And when, when they took me for that surgery, the doctor said to my mother, because of that surgery, you are brave, you are going to do that surgery. That boy may be paralyzed for life or he may die. These were the two options. And then my mother said, I have proof. I have evidence that my God is able. And now she was praying. She got the, the church to pray. 
I'm telling you, what we invite you to witness is not just to witness my Jesus who died 2,000 years ago, but wars again. But I'm telling you, there is resurrection power right now for all of us. There is healing power for all of us. Now, while my mother is crying, weeping, and I remember they, take, they took that big syringe, put it in my back. And that's when it was year after, years after I realized I had Guillain-Barre syndrome and I became paralyzed. At the time, there was no solution for Guillain-Barre syndrome. Up to now, it's, not, it's barely under control. And then my mom was praying and the nurse roll me and my little robe and God helped me really remember everything that happened and put me in that corridor and say wait there we're gonna sanitize and come back while they had me in the corridor there was something that came and that's why I know my God is alive and that's why I cannot stop preaching the word of God because I got evidence I got the other evidence in my life every day I know what I'm talking about. It's conviction. And that's what makes us different from other religions. It's just a theory. Buddha is not there. But my own, it's a life that is inside of me. It's Jesus. While I was there in that corridor, I heard a voice, Pastor Red. That voice said, get up. Get up. There's a little TV here. And I could hear the cartoons God would use anything to save you I heard the cartoon I heard the Tom and Jerry next door for those children who are paralyzed and then I and I said to the voice but I cannot walk I was weeping and I said I cannot walk and I could hear the person push him and say go and watch TV and I listen and I said okay okay for six months never walk I was going to the theater. God knows what would have happened to me. In a third world country. Not enough. Not enough. Science based evidence for anything. And then now. I walk. I move from that table. With my white gun. I can't remember it. Because I had no underwear under it. I walked to those kids. They look at me funny. I was funny to myself that I could walk. And from that time, I'm telling you, at four years old, I got evidence that my God, my God is alive. And I'm here to tell you, there is evidence that he's alive. He would do it again. There is resurrection power in Jesus. And as we are ready to experience that redemption plan, if you trust Him, if you receive Him, God will transform Him. And I'm telling you, my Jesus is alive. He lives. He lives in my heart today. And He died. He rose so you may have eternal life. Is there anybody who wants to receive the blood of Jesus for your salvation? Just raise your hand wherever you are seated. And as we sing, just as I am, just as I am, without one thing. That blood that was, that was shed. Would you stand with me, everybody, to honor that God? Stand with me to honor Him. Just as I am. Somebody get a mic as you sing with me, just as I am. Without one, please, someone. But just that blood, that blood that give us the evidence. Oh, would you stand with me? I see that hand. Just stand with me. Just as I am. Without one plea, but just the blood. That blood I was shed on Calvary. Just as I am. I'm coming to Jesus. The president is coming to pray for someone tonight that you may stand for Jesus while the song is being sung I want someone like they are moving around to move as, as you hear or sing just as I am without one plea 
I want somebody to stand for Jesus. He stood for you on Calvary. He, he stood. He stayed on the cross. Would somebody also come? And you know how I'm going to do it. You have heard enough. For those who have enough evidence. When you had that car accident. The car was total lost. But you are here. You are like a total gain. You want to say Jesus. I come to you. As Sister Smallwood does. What she does best right now. Jesus is calling you. I'm just asking you to just come forward. And we're going to pray with you. You want to say, Jesus, I don't have to worry about the future. I don't have to worry about what the future holds. I trust you. I need no other evidence. I trust you. And you just come. Come. Come to the altar. Hallelujah. You need nothing else. You need no more evidence. You want to say, Jesus, I trust you. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. I got evidence that he can do it. This is how we do it tonight. You have made it through this week. It was by the grace of God. And I want someone tonight to say, God, maybe you came here for the first time. It's your first visit. But you, you want to say, God, I need no more evidence that you are the Lord over my life. You want to accept his lordship over you because he died for you. you. Remember I told you you would vote tonight? You would vote? Because tonight, that's the truth. There are those on the left side of the cross and those on the right side of the cross. I want to just see anybody... You are a member, you are a visitor, whoever you are. You want to be on the right side of the cross, come on my right, your left, right here. We will pray for you. Even the pastor gave the right example. Come, come up here, come up here. You are grateful. This is how we do it. Because I am, I am grateful. I'm grateful I am alive. You just come, come, come along, come. You come, you come, you come. And, and, and as you come, you come to say, God, you gave your life for me. I'm not ashamed to stand for you. If you stood on the cross for me, I'm not ashamed to stand for you. My young friend, would you come with me? Yes, let's go, let's go. You need no evidence, hallelujah. Come, come with me. No evidence, no evidence. Dr. Carter, would you invite his sister? Hallelujah, his sister is here. Hear my humble cry. Yes, 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 God. You can do it, Jesus. There's somebody else who is here. Maybe you are visiting for the first time. Your coming to the altar simply means, simply means, I trust you. I need no more evidence. Because when I was down, you were there for me. When I had nowhere to turn, you were there for me. And Jesus said, let the little children come I would like to invite you to come with the, with, with the little child. And the, the pastor will bless that child even now. Come, come along, come along, come along. Come along, come, come also. Come also, come, come. Let's come along. Yes, come to the altar. Pastor Preston is about to pray. But as he prays, you know what? May the blood of Jesus cover you. The blood that gives victory. I need no more evidence. He died for me. Oh, come, come along. My spirit says you want to come. Look, come with me, come with me. May God bless you, may God bless you. May God bless you. Let us say amen. Let us say amen. My spirit said you, you want to come to Jesus tonight. Why not accompanying the family? Come, come along. It's a blessing. It's a blessing to be under the shadow of the Almighty. Come, come to Jesus. Come. And you did not come by yourself. Come right here. Do not pass me by. But I'm here to tell you, God doesn't want to pass you by. You are letting him by. Passing you by. Come to the altar as we pray. The Holy Spirit is in here. Savior.
just before the prayer. Someone else has a worry. You worried about something. I want you to know that God will roll away your stone. Stones will be rolled away. For the next two weeks, just come to Jesus as you are. Pastor Preston, the mic is yours. Do whatever you want, but bless those people that the this blood of Jesus may cover them. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for the word that we've heard tonight. Thank you for the evidence that were revealed tonight. Evidence that showed that you love us more than life itself. That wretched though we might be, but thank God and praise God that the evidence proved that whosoever will can come to you and you will in no wise cast out. So here we are tonight standing on mercy, standing on grace because you care for us. We thank you for the evidence tonight. The evidence to believe and that was revealed that whatever we are facing right now, that you are an awesome God, a powerful God, that you can do anything, that you can do everything. So tonight, based on the evidence, we come and we bring our spiritual problems. We bring our financial problems. We bring our healing problems to you because, Master, where can we go but to the Lord? And the evidence been proven, shown tonight, that nothing, absolutely nothing, is too hard for you. We thank you for the evidence tonight. The evidence that revealed that to the utmost you can save. That regardless how wretched and miserable though we might be, because of the fact that you died on Calvary, each one of us can make it in. We thank you for the evidence that there still is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. And when sinners like us plunge beneath the flood, we can lose all our guilty stains. Thank you for the evidence that it won't be long now. You're going to come back and you're going to take us home and we'll have no more sickness, no more pain, no more problems. Home with you forevermore. So right now, because we've got the evidence, help us to stand, to cast our vote like Paul, that we'll let nothing separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. So in the name that is above all names, please, when you come, save us in your kingdom, we pray, and we claim it based on the evidence. In the name of Jesus, let the family of God say it together. Amen. amen. And amen. May God bless you tomorrow morning. We continue with this as Jesus is saving such as those who will make it to the kingdom. This is the family redemption plan. See you tomorrow morning. We will worship at 11. Bring a friend. The word will continue. And there is life in the word of God. May God bless you. Amen. Can we give the preacher another hearty amen? amen? Before you get out of here tonight, we just want to say thank you. The evangelist is going to be down front. I want you to come on down and shake the evangelist's hand. Let him know that you've been blessed by the word of God. And we invite you tomorrow. Hear me on this. There's going to be a special service tomorrow. Evangelist, there's going to be a special service tomorrow about 11 o'clock here, right? So it'll be a special service tomorrow. We invite you to come on out for our special service tomorrow, 11 o'clock. And then again on Sunday night, again here on se Sunday night at 7 o'clock, we invite you to come back on out. The evangelist has some great words from the Word of God that's going to thrill our hearts, change our lives, and connect us to the one that has nothing but the most love for us. And that's our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. At this time, we're going to ask Elder Nelson to come on up. Give us closing prayer. Evangelists, come on down. After that, I want you to come and greet the evangelists.
My, 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 church. What a word. Amen. Only thing I can say is ask the Father to go with us now as we go back to our bowls. Merciful Father, we need you to take control of our vehicles, dispatch your Holy Spirit to us so that we can make it home safely. In Jesus' sweet name, I ask and pray. And his people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.